Hello everyone, welcome back to Leeton Road to Self-Sufficiency. I'm Jason and um, this channel is all about our journey to turn quite a large back garden into an area where we can grow enough veg, keep some chickens, get some eggs and maybe have some bees and some honey at a later date. Uh, and in an effort to try and become more self-sufficient. Now, today I'm gonna to do a harvest of some of the crops I've got growing because they're ready for one and I need to make space for another reason. But just before I do that, I just wanna talk about Christmas potatoes because I ordered my Christmas seed potatoes last week because the shops do tend to run out uh, and supplies tend to run out in the summer as people get these seed potatoes ordered and I've ordered three different varieties because I want to grow quite a lot of potatoes if I can and that will hopefully keep us going somewhat through the winter months and early spring so I have ordered Maris pear. So I've got a kilogram of Maris pear seed potatoes. I've got a kilogram of uh, Charlotte, which I really like, one of my favorite potatoes and our new potatoes that I grew this year were Charlotte and they were fantastic. We've eaten them all now, but uh, they were fantastic. And I also bought Nicola. Now, they were in a net, the same as the others, but I took them out to count roughly how many there were, because I'm trying to work out how many buckets I need uh, and how much compost I need, things like that. Now, I won't sow all of these at the same time. Um, I'll probably sow a bucket or two buckets every two week, two weeks of each variety. Uh, and I won't sow any for probably another two weeks. About mid July I'll start and I'll then sow every couple of weeks until I've used up all the seed potatoes. So if you haven't ordered yours yet, then it may be an idea to think about getting that done before the suppliers run out. So I'll probably, in a week or so, I might put these on a windowsill and just check them. You don't have to do that. The ground's warm at this time of year. You don't have to check them, I just prefer to. I like to see that the seed potato has actually produced some uh, shoots before I plant it. So that's that. Right, let's get on and do some harvesting. So one of the first things that I'm going to harvest is this rhubarb. We, when we moved in, we found this growing in the front garden. We didn't want it there. And I just dug it up, shoved it in this part of the garden about March time, April maybe. And it's grown really well considering it was dug up and moved. And it's the time of year really where between April and sort of June, beginning of July is when you need to be harvesting it. Some people say you shouldn't harvest it in the summer, uh, like past July sort of thing. But it's my birthday tomorrow, so if I harvest some of this, maybe, just maybe the missus will make me a nice rhubarb crumble for my birthday.
There's some nice rhubarb stems and they'll cook up really nice I'm sure. It's a now just so you're aware, if parts of the stem are green that doesn't mean it isn't ripe. There's actually no coloration uh, between the colour of the rhubarb and whether it's ripe or not. So some varieties are much redder than this, some aren't. But it's this time of year that you harvest it. April to early summer. And um, as I've mentioned before in another video, if anybody knows what variety this is, please let me know. Because as I said, I just found it growing in the garden. Okay, so the next thing that I've got that really needs to come out is some beetroot. And some nice little beet there. Let's see what else we've got. Strange one. There's a nice one. And these were multi sown in March. That one's not much cop. Nice, so got some half decent. Half decent beetroot there. I'm happy with that for a first year growing in this soil. Okay, carrots. We really like carrots <laughs> in our family. We eat quite a lot of carrots. So there's two rows here. There's a row at the back which were sown early April directly into the ground covered with some polythene and left to their own devices really and there's another row at the front which was sown probably May and it's obviously the ones at the back that I'm going to pull first we did pull one the other day and it had forked it had gone down and hit a stone or something but I'm not surprised in this ground to be honest uh, next year I'll either grow them in buckets or prepare a bed specifically for carrots with much softer ground etc so let's see what we've got that's not a bad carrot now, I'm not going to pull too many of these because carrots store really well in the ground so we can just come down and get them as and when we want them i'm just going to pull a few for the video that's a good one by the looks of it what i did was i just dug a trench literally dug a trench spade width spade depth and filled it with a mix, 50-50 uh, sharp sand and compost, and just sowed the seed straight into it. And that's how I grow carrots, sharp sand and compost. What I'm doing is I'm pulling out the bigger ones that are in between smaller ones, and then I will let the smaller ones grow on for a bit I'll pull one more there that might be one yeah there's some nice carrots there and we will really enjoy those 
Okay, lettuce. Now we've had loads of lettuce this year, salad leaves, the, the pick and come again type. And some of them I've let grow. And I've got a beautiful lettuce here. I'm not sure of the variety, to be honest. But I've, I need to make some space because I've got loads more coming in the greenhouse. Some of these are hearting up. So this, this variety is hearting up. So I think what I'm going to do is let those carry on, forming a nice heart. Whereas this one just produces the leaves. So I think I'm going to pull this one, make some space and leave them to carry on just growing into a nice heart like an iceberg. Is a nice lettuce. Happy days. So there we are folks. A little bit of planning, a little bit of effort. Even in conditions like I'm growing in this year where the soil isn't the best and you know it was literally just dumped over the fence by an excavator and I rotivated it and got some stuff in the ground. And these are the results. And they're not perfect by any means, shape or form. But it just shows that you can do it. And you know, there's some cracking carrots there. And um, I'm not gonna pull any more because they're still better in the ground. And they will carry on growing for a bit as well. We'll, we'll have these over the weekend, I'm sure, with our tea. Some nice rhubarb. A lovely lettuce, but um, I'm sure we'll have some salads with that and some cracking beetroot as well. So I'm going to take this lot up to the house and uh, prepare it, see what we can do with it. And obviously all of the greens will go in the compost, so that goes back into the cycle to feed next year's crops. So all the beetroot leaves, any waste off the lettuce, the carrot uh, stems and leaves and the rhubarb leaves. It all goes back in to the system. And I will be doing a video on making compost in the near future. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please subscribe. Please hit the like button, hit the bell icon so you don't miss any more videos like this. And uh, you've been watching Leeton, The Road to Self-Sufficiency. I'm Jason. I'll catch you next time. Cheers.